This ghost is dressed up as a traditional safari hunter with a pitch helmet and a big white mustache and those weird khaki trousers that make it look like your butt has wings. He's inspecting Mr. Mr. Gun's trophy collection, but doesn't seem particularly impressed. Hi, I'm Fussy Barth. Oh, charmed, I'm sure. Lord Euston Camden Town, at your service. What happened to you, if you don't mind my asking? No, not at all. No, it's a very exciting story. What? I was hunting lions on the plains of the Sparangeti, and one of the blighters got the better of me. Whoa, you were eaten by a lion? That sounds pretty exciting to me. Well, not, not eaten as much. Sneaky buggers crept into my camp and pushed a stack of ammunition crates over me. Oh. Maybe I can help you. Help me do what? I'll help you with whatever's keeping you as a ghost. Though now that I say it, I guess there isn't much I can help I can do to help you get revenge on that lion. Ah, isn't revenge that's keeping me here good? Good for that lion, I say. Turn about it's fair play and all that. What? Though I do wish he'd done it in the matter that made for a better story. So why are you a ghost then? It's because of my one true regret. I never face the most dangerous game. I am definitely not going to help you hunt people. What? No, 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 no. The most dangerous board game. Nobody was willing to play against me. A ball sham. What? What's the game? It leads you over to a small table, which is laid on board of alternated red and black squares, with little wooden discs painted red and black as well. Checkers? The checkers jump and scatter as the ghost stabs two large hunting knives into the center of the board. Knife checkers. What are the rules? Do you know how to play checkers? Yes. Do you know how to stab someone in the hand with a knife? Yes. That's all you need to know, really. Alright, I'll play. You yank one of the knives out of the board. Lord Houston instructs you to hold it left-handed. The rules are, you may only attack your opponent's hand and only when they are over the board. Display checkers, uh, or, uh, displays checkers or play from where they land, but attacking the board directly is a foul which awards the opponent a stab free turn. It appears to be primarily a game of concentration, quick movement and fainting. I'm going to play aggressively. You start out the game by attacking quickly and fiercely to establish dominance and keep your opponent from developing his pieces. This strategy is somewhat effective, but Lord Euston doesn't scare easily and he managed to faint a few pieces past your guard. You enter the mid-game more or less evenly matched. We're gonna play intelligently, intelligently, intelligently. In the mid-game, you focus more on the checkers than on your knife work maneuvering into position for some big gains on the long term. You suffer a few minor nicks and cuts, but are well positioned for the end. And we cannot play carefully with the moxie. I'm gonna play straightforwardly. Nice try, lad. But you have to put a better fight than two sizes, man. Come back when these wounds have scattered up, huh? You get an effect. Angry. Dang. Okay, we need moxie. Uh, we're at 46 moxie and liver and spleen we have we need some moxie no no muscle mysticality moxie I need I need a lot of moxie uh, speed maximum HP increases your moxie by seven there we go. You get an effect. Hagger's Agave. Panama. Okay, I think we can do this now. Okay, bruh. I'll play knife checkers. Play aggressively. Play intelligently. Play craftily. Okay. Lord Houston spots a hole in your defenses. He finds left and quickly slides into the pieces into the gap and into your trap. This moves his hand into you just the position you need to attack it with a hard dawn burn stab. He easily janks his hand out of the way and your knife hits one of the pieces in his edge, flipping it across the board to land neatly in his back rack. King. I say it's a foul to attack the board. Sure, but I wasn't, was I? I attack your hand and you dodge 
that's all. You sneaky blighter. Play continues, but with the king behind Lord Euston's line, you clean up fairly quickly. All right, lad, I concede. Marvelous play, hey, what? Well done. He gives you a smart salute and fades away into nothingness. We effectively destroyed the first ghost. Okay, I'm gonna get out of this place because it gives me the creep. Uh, okay. What do we have here? Okay, let's talk to Florence. Okay. According to my weird instruments, there are 12 ghosts left on the premises. Good. Uh, is that go ghost shooting pool? How, how can he interact with physical optics with that, like that? Well, repetition and familiarity with an action reinforces the etheric field with regards to that action, allowing it to overcome the restrictions of physical inertia. Uh, what's that in layman's term? He's real good at pool. Okay, good. Okay, okay, but before doing this, then we're going to go over here because we know how to... No. We know how to, like, satisfy this ghost. Hello? Uh, yeah, I have, I have the, the glass eye. Thank you very much. She takes the glass eye from you and put it in whereupon it falls through her and onto the floor. She touches and she picks it up. Oh dear, it's a little too physical. Yeah, I wasn't certain that this would work. Don't worry, this is easily fixed. Do you have a hammer I can borrow? A hammer? Yes. That'll do nicely. Thank you. She takes the hammer, places the uh, glass eye on her desk and smashes it with a precise crack. Oh, perfect. She gives you back the hammer and plucks the ghost of the glass eye from the shattered fragments. After blowing the dust off it, she tucks it into her eye socket. That fits much better. Does it work? Well, now that you mention it, no. I can actually see with it. It is the ghost of a glass eye, after all. Oh dear, this will do well. What a shame. You know, I don't really understand why your eye is still missing. What do you mean? Well, I always assume when someone loses an arm or something, it just sticks around as an arm ghost. Uh, that's why people say they can feel it itching sometimes. Because you've still got an arm there, but it's a ghost. It's even called phantom limb syndrome. So logically, if the rest of you becomes a ghost after that, it would hook right back up. But then, where did my eye go? Maybe good, good, pull, got pushed back inside of your head? The ghost thinks about this for a second, then shakes her head. No, that seems... Wait, what? I do feel... I do think I feel something just then. She shakes her head again. My goodness gracious. Keep going. Yep, we got another one. It's like one of those puzzles where you try to get marble in the hole. She bends her head forward and continues shaking it. You can almost hear a faint rattling sound and then plop. She straightens back up, blinking with two eyes. You did it! Well, I'll be. Thank you so much, dear. Never thought it would, uh, 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 I never would have thought of that. No problem. Have a nice time in heaven or whatever. The ghost gives you a friendly wave and fades out of sight. Well, that's it then. Talk to her. Eleven ghost left. Awesome. What about this? Unbar it. Uh, head inside. Okay, there's a dude over here. One of the museum employees is sitting here reading a magazine. As you can see, congratulate him on his newfound freedom. Free from what? Well, from being locked in this room with nothing to do except read that magazine. Oh, so you freed me from having an excellent excuse to do, do, do my crappy job. Well, you freed me from the burden of relaxing in here instead of emptying trash cans and cleaning toilets. Great. Look, you're a real hero. I could just lock the door again. No, I'm too late now. I'm free. Free as the wind blows. Free as my job blows. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Look in the mirror. Investigate this. How to trust Wolf in 10 minutes a day. Hmm. The extraordinary power of trusting the universe. The incredible virtue of tidying up your marriage. Considering your spouse with the secret of your true self. It's actually a 
and a useful book hidden among all this crap. Advanced Cow Punching, Volume 82. How to grow your marriage with the magic of your marriage. How to consider the cosmos with potential. Your true self, your spouse. There's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Advanced Cow Punching. Okay. You already learned all the techniques in this book, but you do pick a few tips and tricks. Nice. Then you work out a little bit by tearing the book in half. <laughs> okay. Turn it off. We got meat. Okay, let me see. If I can provide this guy. Uh, did you figure out how to make a good exploding cigar? Uh, no. What all the novelties did you invent? I uh, invented the kind of mixed nuts that has a spring in it, so when you open it, the nuts spread out everywhere. That's kind of funny. Nobody would ever open the cans because how it said deadly venomous snakes on the label. On the label. Anything else? You know those flowers you wear in your lap and it sprays water in someone's face when they smell it? You invented that? That's a classic. No, I tried to combine it with the chewing gun made out of hot peppers. You invented a botonier that maces people. Uh-huh. Anything else? Um, people seem to like those little sea monkey things, so I thought maybe I'd do that except funnier. And then I thought itching powder is pretty funny. You made itching powder out of brine shrimp. Now they're aquatic, it wouldn't work. I use spider eggs. Oh my god. I tried to make an ultra-realistic steam bomb using pure methane gas. Turns out pure methane is actually odorless. That isn't why farts smell bad. It's also extremely flammable. Hmm. You know those fortune-telling fish? The little cellophane things that curl up in your hands to predict the future? Sure. I don't know how it happened, but mine were 100 accurate, 100 percent accurate, and it was always terrible news. I tried to improve on the classic rubber chicken. Let me guess, not rubber? Good, good guess. Once I made some glasses that let you see through people's clothes. Whoa, right down to their skeletons. Okay, well that's still pretty cool, except for the part where they get cancer. Yeah. I've told you all the ones I can remember. I can tell you again. If you want, no, that's okay. That's okay. Just run away here. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Let's just um, go over here. Something in the restroom. No. Library. Let me see something. Chili spices. Tea service with tea. What is it that you needed? Uh, try. Me. Oh, requires a gun law. Yeah. I'm just gonna walk stupid in this direction. Okay, so... Oh, I need to go to the first floor. First floor. I want to see everybody over here. You see? We're just walking stupid. Okay, we got a lot of people here. Welcome to the Gun Manor uh, Visitor Center. Having greeted you, he now stands perfectly silent. Good. Okay. Hey there, got any tokens that need smashing? Yeah, I got one that I recovered. I love running this thing, so satisfying. What picture do you want in it? A badass shotgun, a magical rifle, a, good, a cool pistol. Let's, let's see, a, a, magical, uh, a magical rifle. Uh, you got an item. Gun Manor Rifle Token. Hmm. It has little sparklies around it. That's how you know it's magical. Probably also shoot beans, but that's not in the picture. 
Okay. I don't have a uh, the, the token. Info. Ask for some info. Thank you for freeing me for that from that book. Still kind of have marks where the engravings press into your face. Hoping they fade with time, but if not, I can always squeeze myself while shaving. What do you do here? I provide information. Want some? Sure. Great. And what would you like to know? Uh, rocks? Ray, I know a ton about uh, rocks now, specifically igneous rocks and granite in particular. Did you know granite gravestones and memorials are considered as status symbols because the tools to carve and engrave such hard stone with speed and precision have only recently been invented? In fact, until about 15 years ago, there was only one workshop in the world that produced them, run by the inventor Alexander McDonald, who also invented the Hatzberger. Although that's proven less popular because Hartsburgerite is not one of the edible kinds of igneous rock. Uh, okay, tell me another one. How about this? Igneous rocks are formed when magma cools and solidifies, which can happen either above or below the Earth's surface, or even in your own home. Neat. Tell me another one. How about this? Geologists call granite massive because it doesn't have any internal structure, and also because it comes in great big lungs. Weird. Tell me another one. Granite contains a least 25% quartz, which makes it useful as a resistance in all kinds of magical devices. Nice. Hitting something with a rock was the very first human invention, and the second was swearing. Uh, granite is a natural source of radiation and can contain 10 to 20 parts per million of uranium, which is why you should fill your underwear with it despite the pleasant way... Oh, you shouldn't fill your underwear, underwear with it despite the pleasant way. Hmm. The upper section of the earth crust is made of 94% igneous rock and 1% marzipan. Obsidian is a type of volcanic glass that if chipped properly can be so sharp it can cut a razor blade in half lengthwise. Uh, granite tablets, uh, uh, tables are frequently used as bases for optical instruments because they are very stable and easy to see. Granite was an integral part of the architecture of many ancient societies, which is why the ruins of these buildings still exist today, unlike those of the ancient peoples who built their uh, all the structures out of cheese and wheat paste. Okay, I didn't know that. Bye. Snack, photos, souvenirs. Oh, look at this. The guy from the bar card is leaning heavily against a display of shot glasses with different names etched onto them. A sign on the display reads, Personalized shot glasses, 1200 meat. The guy picks up a bottle stashed behind the displays and fills the shot glass label, Bill. Is that your name, Bill? The guy squints at the shot glass, sure. He knocks back the shot and tosses the glass over his shoulder before picking up and filling another one. Now it squints Wyatt. Weird. So about this guy? Oh, it's you, my hero and savior. Sorry. Parking validation. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much point in talking to this guy the last time. You know, there's not much point in doing it again. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder... Where I am supposed to go now. Let me see. Cellar. Your partner. Over here. Is there anything I could do? Basement bench. You look over the tools in the bench. You could definitely make a silencer. Okay, I need uh, the cylinder. Mess with them. Anything here? No. Over here? No. And we're good here. Here are the spiders, which I'm not going to mess with. Those things are nasty. And we're just walking stupid. 
bottle, cellar, kitchen. Oh, there's a guy here. Again, oh, this is the guy who doesn't know how to poach the eggs. Dining room. The guy with the chili thing. I have something for the chili, but I don't know what else. Let's just go to the third floor. Gun. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Hey there, how's it going? I ain't interested in chit chat, fella. Just billiards. Step up, shut up. Challenge him to a game. You don't have a cube. You also don't have a clue how you play with, uh, without one. Alright. There's a trap door in the ceiling over here. Too bad you're like 11 feet tall. This was the biggest and dumbest poster you've ever seen. Ah, oh, Spittoon here. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give what are you doing? Nothing, what are you doing? Look at that, someone who's kneeling next to a Spittoon with the apparent intention of sticking his whole entire face inside it. Dive in. You jam your hand into the Spittoon uh, up to the shoulder and find nothing. The brass bucket is shiny and clean outside and in. Clean as the day was born. The museum staff must have washed it. It looks brand new. Are you crying? No, I'm fine. You're crying. Okay, well, I'll just be over here whenever you're done lying on the ground in the fetal position and hugging a spittoon. Uh, it's a rack of billiard cues. Grab one. Okay. Now, we can we can play. You pull out your cue and the ghost nods and racks the balls. He utterly trounces you. You can't just seem to make the balls where you go where you're intended. That was the saddest show as I've ever seen. Let me see that cue. Oh, that's your problem. The thing's about as straight as a, ha a banker's handshake. What? You're gonna need to lather this back to true if you want a chance against me. Okay, I know. We gotta go, we gotta go. Go to the first floor. A lathe. I don't know how to pronounce that. But we're just gonna walk through a bit. Here. There we go. Come on, it's, it's here. There we go. We got a balanced billiards cube. We're just gonna walk stupid all the way back. Woohoo! Uh, third floor. When third floor. Here, we go up here, now we go against the ghost, challenge to a game. He proceeds to crush you. <laughs> Something feels wrong, like your cue isn't connected with the ball properly. The ghost shakes his head at you. Totally new to this, ain't you? You gotta chalk your cue. Can I borrow yours? Mine's got chalk. Wouldn't work. Dang it. Uh, where am I going to get, like, chalk? Can't do anything with this machine. Let's see over here, for instance. Yeah, this guy. Socks. Oh. Yeah, shut up, Goblin. Let's see. Garbage. Something here. No. Already picked the thing clean. You got any ideas? I uh, guess this is where Mr. Gun hung out. Heck of a thing to have a, a whole separate room for each of your individual hobbies probably ended up with so many rooms in this house they had to struggle to think of what to put in, in them all. Is that a, what you may call it, a meta-commentary? Uh, nope, nope. Hmm. 
music room. Okay, haven't been here. This is the music room. Okay, this woman doesn't seem to be interested in anything other than cranking that hurly. Okay, disconnect the crank. You definitely disconnect the crank, but the hurly girded without alerting the woman's attention. But it turns out that you needn't have bother. She continues to turn the crank, blank eyed, even with nothing attached. He grabbed the end of the crank and pulled her very slowly to the gift shop, where you'll find a vitrola to plug her into. Problem solved. You see? She's here. Yeah. She seemed just as happy here as she was before. Must be nice to have a calling. It must be nice. Good. Now we go here. No. We go over here, we're just walking stupid. We go up. Uh, third floor. Okay, Mr. Gun. No. I need Chuck for that. No, this is done. No. Go over here. Just walk in still. Music room. Okay, now we can take this. Without the lady here to crank it, the hurdly girly is neither hurting nor girling. This is a bassoon, and you know what they say it makes an ass out of N and what? Boo! A mostly decayed pile of old music books. Uh, almost all of the books are dry, rotted, and moth-eaten, and fall apart at the touch. You do find a couple of dueling bunches in reasonable shape, though. You got an item. Dueling bunches. This is a book of sheet music for the classic song, Dueling Bunches. There's a library called number written on the spine. Oh. Now we can do this. There's some sheet music on the piano. Grab it play dueling badges. I can't play dueling badges by myself. I don't have enough arms. Florence, sorry, I can only play the bike pipe, but not very well. It's a bike pipe, how do you know? How about you, Susie? If you go play the piano, pretty sure two people can play both parts of dueling badges on the same piano. In fact, I reckon it might be straight up illegal to try. You guys have no fun. What about this ghost over here? This is the ghost of an or or orchestra conductor, unless he's a ghost of someone pretending to be an orchestra con conductor. Either he's very agitated about something or he's conducted flight of the bumblebee. Try talking to him. Sorry to interrupt, but I can actually hear the music. What are you conducting? It's the finale of the year 1812 Solemn Overture by Tchaikovsky. Oh, the 1812 Overture, sure. That would have been my second guess. Or is your orchestra like double ghost or something? But, I see, no, there's no orchestra. I merely have this piece of music irrevocably lodged in my head. It has been nagging me at me incessantly ever since my death. Ask him about his death. Just a guess. Did you die during a performance of the 1812 over 2? That is correct, yes. Very astute of you. The finale of that piece featured real actual cannons, right? Is that how you died? Uh, uh, if it was my fate to be slain by a piece of music, cannons would have been far preferable to my utterly farcical demise. What happened? The overture requires several cannons, because it is impossible to load a single cannon quickly enough to fire as the score demands. However, the stage we were performing on could not have borne the weight. What did you do? I was not informed of the difficulty until it was far too late to make any changes. It transpired that the stage manager decided it would be sufficient to give a box of bullets to the tuba player. We were shot by a tuba. I was shot, as you say, by a tuba. Whoa, no wonder you ended up a ghost. Oh, it isn't the ridiculousness of my death that troubles me, really. Accidents happen, as with any of, my per of the performing arts. A colleague of mine was decapitated by an errant symbol during a performance of Paganini's Violin Crescento number one. Sure, such are, are the risks we take for our art. Gosh. The problem is that the 1812 Overture finale is a very dramatic and energetic piece. 
With this music constantly replaying itself in my head, I have been utterly unable to find any peace. I'll see if I can think of a way to help. And I know how to help. We just go over here. We go to the library now, which is, as I understand, on the second floor. And we talk to this lady. Okay, can you help me with some library stuff? I found a book and thought you might want it back. Thank you. Put it back on the shelf if you would. The number on the spine will lead you to its proper location. Okay. Okay, investigate. Oh, we got dual law. Interesting. Duly noted. We have no idea when for the start. Yeah, even want to start, investigate. Okay. I don't know if this is good. Uh, talk to her. I'm looking for a book on a specific topic. Um, okay, thanks. We got, we got Gun Law, or Dune Law, read it, we got a perk, Dual Law, okay, um, blank sheet music, let me talk to this ghost here, Hey, what's your problem anyway? Legal stuff requires gun law. Oh. oh yeah, try me. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, we got a bunch of ghosts, we got a bunch of people, but I think we've made a lot of significant progress in this recording session. So for now, I'm just gonna just like walk stupid over here for a while and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for now. See you next time. On the dark roads of Montana There's a shadow in the dirt The whisper of a mountaineer in a ragged flannel shirt He walks the stony hillsides With his mandolin in hand But you'll never see his face Around this long forgotten land